Brian, can you tell us about the meridians? Well, there are 12 main meridians on each side of the body, plus one up the midline and one down the centre of the back, giving you 14 major meridians. These meridians are imaginary, invisible network of lines which transport energy. According to Chinese theory, pain was a stagnation of energy in one of these meridians and therefore could become t the area could become tender. Why are we stimulating the skin? Well, the skin is the largest organ in the body. It comprises some 16% of the body's weight. Underneath the skin is collagen, which is the connective tissue of the body. Collagen has a particular form which allows it to transduce any pressure into an electrical stimulation which is transmitted to the brain by the nerves. And so how do we connect skin and acupuncture points? An acupuncture point is an area on the skin of lowest electrical resistance, therefore increased conductivity. By stimulating these points, we can stimulate the nerve endings more easily than stimulating points on the skin which are not known as acupuncture points. So an acupuncture point is just a sens an electrically sensitive area on the skin's surface, that if we stimulate the skin in a given pattern, we can stimulate the brain in a given pattern. Brian, how does this process begin? After being called to examine a horse, you may notice that a, the track rider or the jockey may have noticed that the horse was lame in its action or it was not working generously if it was a dressage horse. The owner or stable hand may have noticed an injury. It may have been cast in a stable. And if we don't have an injured horse, are there other situations in which we can use these skills? Yes, merely by watching the horse in action when it's being ridden. You may notice the horse is flashing its tail, it may even be winning. But if it's flashing its tail, it's not happy. This is a sign that the horse is uncomfortable. This can also be used if you're selling a horse or wanting to buy a horse. It's a good way of checking the horse out first because you can pick up a lot of conditions that aren't noticed on a standard veterinary test. What other things may we do to find out information about the horse? Well, obviously the first thing you do is you look for injuries, muscle wastage, dropped hips, uh, old scars from previous injuries. Old scars can be particularly important and require treatment. A scar doesn't have to cause a problem, but it may cause a, quite a serious problem. How does acupuncture relate to Western medicine? Acupuncture, as you know, is the ancient Chinese art of inserting fine metal needles at predetermined points on the body to elicit a physiological response. It is as efficient as, or more efficient than in some cases, Western medicine for a number of conditions. And this is particularly so in the case of the horse, which has got a very sensitive skin. Until recently, the mode of action of acupuncture was not completely understood. Physiology is the study of how the body works. Neurophysiology is the study of how the nerves work. Now that we can explain acupuncture, in modern scientific neurophysiological terms, we ha are now able to introduce a totally safe, effective and very efficient method of treating animals and humans. The skin is the largest organ of the body and it has both sensory and protective functions. By stimulating specific areas on the skin, we are stimulating specific areas in the brain to release a cocktail of chemicals. The connective tissue under the skin converts any stimulation, heat, light, uh, pressure, into electrical impulses which are carried to the nerve, to the brain via the nerves. And how does an injury become lasting, chronic pain? Well, if you cut yourself, you expect it to heal in two or three weeks. If the body doesn't heal, the brain switches off the healing pattern. Let me explain that another way. Just as you have your collar around your neck or the shoes on your feet, the information's been going into your brain all day, but your brain's learned to ignore these impulses. The moment I mention them, you become aware of them. Now, if the brain has had an injury for more than three weeks, it switches off. The healing process is switched off, the pain impulses continue. By stimulating the skin, we stimulate the brain to recognise the injury and healing occurs. It's as simple as that. You've told us to put the torch on the skin. Should we press hard? No, because if you press hard, you're going to compress the tissue under the skin and therefore change the refractive index and the way the light enters the tissue. 
you also have the possibility of damaging the tissue which releases chemicals at a local area which we do not need. The light will not create any damage. Why do we use small lights to stimulate when our horses stand around in the sunlight all day? Let me answer your question this way. When you turn on a radio, you get static. When you tune into one wavelength, you get one radio station. So each radio station is on a separate wavelength. Ordinary white light comprises of some 300 different wavelengths. And this is the equivalent of visible static. When you tune into one wavelength, you can penetrate the skin and stimulate the tissue. If we drop a single pebble into a pond, you will notice ripples coming away from that pebble. If you drop a handful of pebbles in, the ripples interfere with each other. This is the same as a multiplicity of wavelengths, be it from a radio station, a radio, or from a light. They interfere with each other and they do not penetrate the skin. Equine photonic therapy uses a single wavelength of red light which can penetrate the skin. The energy of a wavelength of light is called a photon. So the photons of light penetrate the skin and stimulate the underlying tissues.